Hello everyone, how's everybody doing? This is Doc ID and welcome to the channel where we talk about infectious diseases and today I got a interesting topic that we're going to go over. It was a small case study done in Germany and they looked at post-mortem examinations of patients who died of coronavirus. know that uh, coronavirus uh, disease can be uh, pretty severe and uh, most of the times like 15% of the time when a patient gets coronavirus they kind of have severe disease severe lung disease as well and five to six percent are critically ill so with the combination of the severe and critical they have a high very high mortality rate so that's what we kind of really worry about in the hospital that's what the whole thing is about once you get into that hospital and you enter like that, outcome may not be uh, good, especially if you're older and you have co other existing diseases. So, uh, what basically happened in this study? It was done in Germany, like I said. They did an autopsies were conducted uh, according to best published practices that they have, and this happened from April the 4th through the 19th. So, pretty much like two weeks uh, is what they saw. So, here we go. So, we saw Postmortem examinations were conducted in 10 people who died between 4 slash 4 and 4 slash 19. The median age was 79 years old. Males were 7 out of the 10 patients who died. All patients that were tested positive for coronavirus were by nasopharyngeal swab at the time of the hospital admission. The median duration from when the person was admitted to the hospital and unfortunately when he died was seven and a half days. All the patients had a median of four known comorbidities with cardiovascular disease being the most frequent. Nine patients out of the ten had the classic what we call a ground glass opacity and that's exactly what we saw in our hospitals as well. And here you can see the lung, what we call fluffy infiltrates, ground glass opacities in the lungs. So let's uh, jump on to what we call acute diffuse alveolar damage is what I'm going to go in. There are two stages. One was early, one was organizing. And uh, I know the slide's going to be a little busy, but bear with me. We're going to go with through some macroscopic and some histological pictures. Uh, that will kind of make sense uh, to you. So early phase we saw some hyaline membrane formation, intraalveolar edema and some thickened alveolar septa with perivascular lymphocytic blastocystic infiltration and, and then in the organizing stage again we saw pronounced fibroblastic proliferation, some fibrosis, we also saw some pneumocystis hyperplasia and some collapsing of the alveolus patchy lymphocytic infiltration again was one of the predominant finding so we'll go to this uh, histopathological that's what we see under the microscope I know that it started you seeing those red lines appearing that's what we call hyaline uh, membranes is, is what we saw in this diffuse alveolar damage we also saw what we call multi nucleated giant cells and you can see in those two where the arrows are performing uh, as well and then we go to the uh, next uh, two figures which is F and G you will see uh, some squamous and some osseous uh, metaplasia going on in a patient with a fatal course of coronavirus disease and that's uh, what we saw in the, uh, that slide we come to here diffuse alveolar damage it was detectable in uh, all lobes but really kind of appeared with mostly in the middle and the lower lobe lung fields and you can see that as I've uh, outlining them that that's where we predominantly saw the infection uh, going on here are some macroscopic pictures of exactly that where it's uh, you can see the uh, again the middle and the lower lobes here's another picture that you can see what uh, your lungs should not look like uh, and what it does look like with this severe coronavirus disease 
so we can uh, go to some discussion about it really there was no detectable pathology in other organisms we're kind of seeing that uh, as respiratory being the worst organ that is uh, affected and causing mortality uh, you can see that coronavirus was still detectable in the respiratory tracts of all patients and uh, so this is what they saw. They saw the, it was the predominant histopathological finding and the leading cause of death in patients that were on intubation or not intubation. So even if they didn't die or being in respirator, I mean, in being intubated on a uh, machine, it still had the same findings. So really, uh, the respiratory tract was the main issue uh, for for mortality. We also saw in the hospitals and patients coming in with new strokes and uh, that's where the C uh, CNS involvement, what we call the central nervous system, uh, could not be actually detected in any of these patients uh, that we had. All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this uh, topic. Uh, it was kind of interesting to me, at least as an infectious disease doctor, knowing what the postmortem findings are for these coronavirus patients because we did see uh, a lot of people did die mostly of respiratory issues and we couldn't really find what was going on other uh, factors such as infection or was it something else because these patients were there uh, for really like this study showed seven and a half days but this was just the median some people a lot longer so i hope you guys like comment uh, if you have any questions and also don't forget to subscribe i'll be coming up with some new articles pretty soon and they're pretty interesting as well so till then i will see you next time